so hello people welcome to another session of the subject of anesthesia on this wonderful platform of an academy live so we are going to be dealing today with five mcqs in 15 minutes i am your mentor your friend dr hitesh nathani and i teach anesthesia on this wonderful platform of an academy so let's begin today's session before we begin our today's session let me tell you where can you find me on the unacademy platform yes you can find me on the educator plus badge in which i have been taking right now the fmge badge which is on the medical marathon for mcqs medical marathon for fmg students that is currently going on and i have been taking the anesthesia lecture for you guys for this medical marathon on fmg right and secondly you can find me on my individual concise course which i have been taking right now it is known by the name of conceptual course in anesthesia yes i have been taking that course and i have already completed three lectures in that in that i am taking the basic concepts of anesthesia in which we generally tend to miss out on the basics of anesthesia and we tend to lose out the marks on that right in anesthesia simplified my main motto is to make anesthesia fun simplified and scoring for you guys so that you don't miss out on this so easy subject and the marks which are so easy for you to score in the examinations and also you can find me on the telegram group my telegram group goes by the name anesthesia simplified by dr hitesh there are continuous polls quizzes and explanations of those quizzes as well there you can also interact with me personally and ask your doubts whenever you want to okay also if you want to attend the free classes which are there going on right now on the unacademy platform you can either download the app or you can subscribe it via the www.anacademy.com from your laptop and from there once you set your goal which is the neat pg from there you can attend this live classes and after attending that if you feel like you want to take a subscription my code is dr hitesh and in which you will get this 10% discount if you use this code and you can get the subscription for 1 month 3 months 6 months and so on and so forth right so let us begin with the first question for the day that is a 29 year old patient with a history of road traffic accident rta is brought to the emergency department or to the casualty of your hospital now this patient has suffered with severe maxillofacial trauma hmm? now what are the findings of that patient let us have a look into that the heart rate is 120 per minute blood pressure is 100 by 60 mm of mercury and saturation is only 80% so what would be your immediate management remember this is a very important mcq it has been asked into the previous years aims examination so there are high chances and high possibility that similar kind of clinical based scenario can be asked in today's exams as well right in the neat pg 2021 and even before that in the november aims you can actually get such kind of scenarios so in this scenario what is the examiner trying to tell us a 29 year old with a road traffic accident of history suffering from severe maxillofacial trauma right heart rate is 120 per minute bp is 100 by 60 spo2 is 80% what should be your immediate management option a mesotracheal intubation option b orotracheal intubation option c iv fluids or option d of tracheostomy even if you just look at the options you can see that the three options out of four are about airway securing airway management that means one of the most important criteria that we have to look for here is why is the spo2 at 80% right heart rate 120 okay it is little bit on the higher side i can understand that but it is a marginal tachycardia which can be controlled yes second bp is still under control yes it is not yet fallen to a drastic level where you have to actually overtly go and treat hypotension first but spo2 if you see it might be either because of the saturation falling down what might be the reason for that spo2 has gone down up to 80% is yes. normally it should be around 99 to 100% in such a young male if not at least 92 should be our target when it goes below 90 we should look at the pulse supplement it with oxygen but it is now right now at 80% so we have to secure the airway in this first so automatically this option c is ruled out that is iv fluids can be given as a supportive management to treat 
tachycardia and hypotension because of the polytrauma that the patient has suffered but spo2 why has it fallen down let us have a look into the causes of that and let us try and actually treat it first right so what it can be treated by is a nasotracheal intubation orotracheal or tracheostomy these are the three options by which you can secure the airway now whether we will we go for nasotracheal intubation remember this is a patient with maxillofacial trauma yes it is very clearly mentioned here nasotracheal intubation is a contraindication when it is a maxillofacial trauma patient right in cases of maxillofacial injuries nasotracheal intubation is contraindicated why because the skull base might be fracture you never know yes there might be fracture of skull base and you do not want to intubate in such a patient who might be having a skull base fracture and the tube might actually go up there so nasotracheal intubation is a contraindication in oro maxillofacial trauma oro maxillofacial injuries right oro tracheal intubation and tracheostomy which is more easier to perform yes right now the immediate management has to be oro tracheal intubation yes for tracheostomy you require an expertise you require a surgical backup and you require a surgical hand as well right tracheostomy can also be an option but with oro tracheal intubation why do you want to give a neck onto the anterior part of the neck of the patient and secure a tracheostomy tube when you can tide over the crisis with a oro tracheal intubation yes that is one of the options tracheostomy if you want to keep the patient ventilated for a long period of time then tracheostomy can be thought of but right now immediate management should not be tracheostomy it has to be oro tracheal intubation in such scenarios right let us have a look into the second question the placement of double lumen tube for lung surgery is best confirmed by again this is one of the question which was asked into the previous year's examination these are some of the very important questions which the topic remains the same right but the way of asking the question differs so therefore your concepts when it comes to anesthesia should be very strong the placement of double lumen tube for lung surgery that means for thoracotomy is best confirmed by yes it is either by capnography auscultation airway pressure management or by bronchoscopy yes most of the times we generally tend to go for capnography in such scenarios right but that is the correct answer when it comes to a normal endotracheal tube yes it is when the intubation is done with the normal pvc endotracheal tube and the tube is kept in trachea but when you are having this double lumen tube what happens in cases of double lumen tube one of the lumen lies into the trachea and the other lumen goes and it gets inserted into the primary bronchus so therefore with this you will be actually able to isolate the lung and perform one lung ventilation when you want to right in cases of lung surgeries in cases of thoracotomies in cases of lung surgeries and thoracotomies this double lumen tube is actually used to actually deflate one side of lung and inflate or ventilate via just one lung that is known as one lung ventilation now for that you can either confirm the tube by what capnography is a confirmation that the tube is into the trachea but what will actually give you a confirmation that your second lumen is into the primary bronchus or it is there into the lung part where you actually want to inflate or ventilate the lung yes actually you will have to see through it right so which among the following options are actually helping you to see through it it is fiber optic bronchoscope yes so bronchoscopy via fiber optic method is the best possible answer here right it is you to that is capnography will for sure help you in telling that the tube is into the trachea right but it will not tell you whether the tube is properly positioned or not right so for the proper positioning of the tube you have to have a proper scopy that is bronchoscopy you have to see through it that the one tube is lying into the trachea and the other tube other lumen is into the bronchial part right auscultation yes after confirmation and all those things you have to auscultate whether that side of the lung is being ventilated properly or whether it is deflated or no whether the one lung ventilation is possible or no yes that is also a one of the options but that is not the best possible answer here so okay and airway pressure management for sure that is not the, not the answer here so correct answer for this placement of double lumen tube yes double lumen tube it is asking now for the lung surgery is best confirmed by bronchoscopy moving on to the next question most common nerve 
which is used for neuro monitoring under anesthesia yes under anesthesia where do you and why do you monitor the nerve monitoring yes why do we require that whenever we give the patient the non depolarizing muscle relaxants or muscle relaxant for that matter yes we need to know whether the patient is under the influence of that muscle relaxant right now or the patient is coming out of the muscle relaxant yes so for this we should know which is the best possible nerve to monitor the part of the muscle relaxation whether it is ulnar nerve facial nerve median nerve or radial nerve out of the four options you can see three options are of the nerve supplying the hand or of the upper limb so for sure you can guess from this that one of the nerve from ulnar median and radial can be one of the options now which nerve is most transcutaneously easily monitorable one second which can actually be telling you visually also you can see easy to monitor the site is accessible as well as you can actually get a graph of that very easily yes so in this feature we will actually see that the correct answer here is what you can see here is the ulnar nerve yes what do we monitor with the help of neuro monitoring when we are monitoring the ulnar nerve yes when we are monitoring the ulnar nerve what do we look for we look for the adductor pollicis that means you are looking at the which is at the thumb yes this monitor will actually tell you sometimes the question can be asked into the image bit format that you can see here in this image right we are actually giving the twitches onto the nerve we are stimulating the nerve and we are actually looking for the adductor pollicis movement that means with the train of four ratio that means with four twitches you are actually checking whether the patient is under the effect of muscle relaxant right now or whether the patient is coming out of muscle relaxant yes in during the course of the surgery if you are monitoring this you can actually keep the patient throughout the surgery into the deeper plane of anesthesia with the help of continuous top ups of muscle relaxant yes at the end of surgery this is actually a marker for you to tell that the patient is out of the muscle relaxant duration right now and it is good time to reverse the patient and extubate the patient and remove the endotracheal tube right so best possible now which can be monitored here is ulnar nerve and what do we monitor with that we monitor the adductor pollicis tendon and we look for the thumb movements yes second best possible answer here is facial nerve with this we monitor what orbicularis oculi right orbicularis oculi muscle is what we monitor with the facial nerve so first possible answer best answer is ulnar nerve if this is not there into the option second best answer can be facial nerve yes medial nerve and radial nerve is not the nerve that we monitor routinely right moving on to the next question which of the following muscle relaxants is free of cardiovascular effects in the entire clinical dose range yes that means no matter what amount of dose of muscle relaxant you give to a patient there will be no cardiovascular effects of that that means the heart rate and the blood pressure or mean arterial pressure that we call it should be stable and it should not be hampered because of your neuromuscular relaxation let us have a look at the options pancuronium option b atracurium option c vecuronium and option b are d tuberculary we have already seen in our plus classes when we were dealing with the neuromuscular relaxants we have discussed it into the chart format and in that one of the format was what is the effect of heart rate of this muscle relaxant that means whether they are vagolytic or not and whether these muscle relaxants release histamine or not yes with the release of histamine and whether they are regulating effect they actually cause increase in heart rate a lot of times and with because of histamine release they can also cause increase in blood pressure as well right so there are hemodynamic changes which occur okay so which of the following are vagolytic pancuronium yes we know that it is a vagolytic therefore it will cause increase in heart rate atracurium it releases histamine so atrac atracurium is a histamine releaser so it will cause what a hemodynamic disturbance yes what about vecuronium and dtubercularis dtubercularis also releases histamine yes so it will also have some effect on the cardiovascular system whereas vecuronium it has got no effect of vagolytic effect and it has got it is not a histamine releaser therefore it will have no effect on the heart rate it will have no effect on the blood pressure of the patient therefore most cardio stable neuromuscular relaxant and the drug of choice in cardiovascular surgery when it comes to muscle relaxant is it vecuronium yes 
So this is the correct answer. Option C, that is vacuodynamic, is the best possible answer or drug of choice when it comes to cardiovascular effects or the muscle relaxation which is free of cardiovascular effects in the entire clinical dose range. Right, people. Moving on to the next question, the ASA classification is done for. Yes, what do you mean by ASA classification? And it is done for what basis? Yes, it is done to assess the risk assessment. Option B is it is done to check the physical status of the patient. It is done to for the pain assessment of the patient, or it is done for assessment of the airway. Yes. What do you mean by ASA? ASA the full form is American Society of Anesthesiologists. American Society of Anesthesiology. So therefore, this ASA is actually determined where we do it into the pre-operative period. And what do we actually determine with this? We actually look whether the patient is suffering from any medical conditions, any comorbidities. Yes. So we are actually looking at what? We are looking at the physical status of the patient. What exactly is the physical status of the patient? Whether the patient is able to climb a flight of stairs right now or no? Whether the patient is suffering from hypertension, diabetes, yes or no? Or whether the patient has any history of trauma with head injury, yes or no? Or what exactly is the physical status right now? Yes. Depending upon that, we give the grading from ASA grade one to ASA grade six, right? And also we can add a suffix. E in that, which means that it can be an emergency surgery when we are adding suffix e in that, right? So ASA classification is done for assessing the physical status of the patient, right? Pain assessment we have got the VAS score for that one. That is what visual analog scale, right? So that is also from range from zero to ten. Yes. For airway airway assessment, what do we do? We have the Malampati classification, which is asked frequently time and again. Yes. And with the ASA, we assess the physical status of the patient. Yes, whether the patient is lying into the ASA category one or ASA category six, that is how we actually label the physical status of the patient. So I hope you enjoyed this five questions in 15 minutes of this YouTube session. There are many more sessions like this coming up on the Unacademy, and you can also subscribe to the Unacademy platform, where we will be happy to guide you time and again, day in and day out. We are there for you to actually solve your queries and doubt solving. When it comes to life, there is nothing better than that. Yes. So I'll see you in my next class. Till then, it is bye from me. Signing off, Dr. Hitesh. Bye bye, guys.